Hi, I'm Chris Wardlaw for CarGurus, and this is the gorgeous new 2017 Volvo S90, decked out in beautiful muscle blue metallic paint with attractive 20-inch wheels. Yummy, delectable even. People take notice too. They stare, they swivel their heads for a better look. They come right up and say hello to talk about the car. If it's true that styling sells cars, then Volvo should have no trouble putting a slew of S90s into the hands of drivers. The question is then, once those drivers are sitting behind and caressing the S90 steering wheel, are they gonna like it? Let's go for a drive and discuss. You can get a Volvo S90 for as little as $47,945. My test car, however, is the S90 T6, and it's loaded with every option except for an air suspension and a black headliner. That brings the price to $66,940, including the destination charge. It also puts the S90 into some pretty serious company, lining up against the heavy hitters in the segment, including the BMW 5 Series, the Mercedes E-Class, and others. But based on my experience, Volvo can absolutely justify it. Now, obviously, if you're looking to drive something different from what everybody else chooses in the class, this Volvo is a terrific choice from a styling and a design perspective. But is it a terrific choice for a driver? I'll say this, the S90 T6 is quick. It's got a two liter four cylinder engine boasting both turbocharging and supercharging, and it makes 316 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. An eight-speed automatic transmission delivers the power to each corner of the car for exceptionally sure-footed, all-wheel driven acceleration. Now, Volvo claims you can get to 60 miles an hour in this car in no more than 5.7 seconds, and by the seat of my pants, that seems credible. Plus, I got 22.5 miles per gallon on my test loop, and that's a little bit less than the official EPA estimate of 25 miles per gallon, but I did have to modify my route a little bit because of weather conditions and road conditions, and that added a lot more uphill driving than usual. Oh, and here's something you wouldn't expect. The S90 T6 can actually tow up to 4,600 pounds. Now drivers can alter the behavior of the engine and the transmission by switching the car into a different driving mode. Your choices include eco, comfort, and sport, and there's an individual setting that you can custom tailor to your preferences. Now, you can tell the difference between the three main choices. Eco, of course, makes the car feel a little more sluggish and less responsive, while Sport makes the car feel a little more energetic and reactive. Most of the time, I used Comfort Mode, switching to Sport Mode only for driving on some of my favorite mountain roads. So, is the S90 a luxury car? For the most part, yeah. Aside from some excessive road noise on certain types of pavement, an occasional unbecoming stiffness in the suspension, each of which could be attributable to this car's optional 20-inch wheels and tires. The S90 absolutely delivers a smooth and supple ride. Now, what about a sports sedan? To an unexpected degree, also yes, and likely thanks to the oversized wheels and tires. Now, if you switch the car into sport mode and you use the manual shift gate, you will be able to hustle this Volvo harder than you'd ever guess. Still, there is some room for refinement on both of those fronts. This is a good car to drive, but it's not a great one. Now, Volvos are known for their soothing, comfortable seats, and in the new S90, that's true for front seat occupants. They do lack a massage function, and the controls are unnecessarily fiddly, but they provide excellent long-distance support. In my test car, they're heated and ventilated too. Now, rear passengers are not quite as lucky. Sure, the premium Napa leather is smooth and supple, just like it is up front, and separate climate controls give each person control over their individual temperature setting. Plus, the outboard positions are heated, and these are all good things. But the rear seat cushion sits unexpectedly low, and the footwells are rather tight. Now, as far as storage space in the cabin is concerned, that's not exactly generous either. In fact, the center console bin is so small, I'm not really sure why Volvo bothered in the first place. That leaves the glove box, the door panel bins, and the cup holders for anything much larger than a key or a smartphone. Trunk space isn't much to brag about either. It measures just 13.5 cubic feet, and that's 
not much more space than you're going to find in a Toyota Corolla. Volvo beautifully trims the S90's interior. From the premium leather to the matte finish walnut wood and the metal accents, this is a rich yet minimalistic cabin in the Scandinavian tradition. Now, Volvo's Census Connect infotainment system is one reason for the lack of interior clutter. It's oriented vertically on the dashboard, it looks and works very similar to a tablet computer, and that would be great if anyone thought it was a good idea to use an iPad while they're driving. Now, it's not terribly hard to figure out how to use Census, and Volvo makes it really easy to drag and drop specific functions in order to arrange them the way that you want them. But just as sometimes you forget where certain functions are located on your smartphone, you can forget where certain functions are located within this system. Furthermore, sometimes I would accidentally touch the screen or touch the wrong part of the screen, and I'd launch a menu or a function that I didn't really want, and that just causes aggravation. Also, the voice recognition system in this car caused significant frustration when I was trying to find a specific restaurant in an unfamiliar geographic region. I finally used the handwriting recognition technology, and it was real easy for the system to find the place we were looking for using that method. It's also important to note that the display screen does not respond well to dry fingertips, and it washes out when sunlight is shining directly upon it. And my God, does this thing collect fingerprints like you wouldn't believe. I will say this though, the 19 speaker Bowers & Wilkins premium audio system in this car sounds absolutely amazing. Whether or not it's worth the $3,200 to upgrade, that's for you to decide. Now, one thing that I really like about the new S90 is the fact that it comes with free emergency crash notification service for 10 full years. If that doesn't underscore Volvo's commitment to your safety, I really don't know what could. Now, according to the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, the new S90 gets top crash prevention and crash protection ratings. But strangely, the car's LED Thor's hammer headlights only get a marginal rating for their effectiveness after dark. Now, Volvo's hard at work on autonomous driving technology with the goal of preventing all deaths and serious injuries in all of its products by the year 2020. Now, that's really admirable. And as a part of that goal, every new S90 comes standard with something called Pilot Assist, which Volvo says is a semi-autonomous driving technology. Naturally, then, I tested it and I didn't find it particularly satisfying to use. So I checked to make sure everything was turned on and I tested it again. Still, it wasn't all that satisfying given the promise of semi-autonomous driving and what I was expecting the system to be able to do. Suffice it to say that the S90 still requires a driver. I had really high hopes for the new Volvo S90, a sensational looking luxury sedan that stands apart from the crowd. Unfortunately, beneath its beautiful skin, I wasn't able to discover quite the depth of refinement I was expecting. Now, part of my disappointment is related to little things like excessive road noise or how the center console almost constantly creaks or how loud the seat ventilation system is. And these things collectively add up to a lack of refinement. Mainly though, it relates to the technology. I don't really want an iPad on my dashboard. And if you're a car company bragging about semi-autonomous braking, steering, and accelerating, I'd better be able to count on it to work every time and in every situation. Otherwise, what's the point? Still, even with its flaws, I really like this car. Be sure to check out my full review of the S90 on cargurus.com. And if you found this review helpful, please share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For all of us at Car Gurus, thank you for watching. What did you do? Uh, what did you do? Why did you, you know what another thing is that I like about this car? You can clunk your unruly children with the headrests. <laughs>